In this show, you can join in the action from home. Download the Poker Play Along app from your app provider. Domination. That's brutal. Phil loves your lunch. It's more delicious to him than his own lunch. Just bullying everybody. As usual. Subordination. Isn't it funny? He's got like a baby face, but then this like deadly undertow. <laughs> Too sharp. Oh, Meditation? He's totally meditating. He's in the gap right now. <laughs> Sick. Heat six is well underway in Monaco, and unsurprisingly, Phil Ivey is crushing. You look good in there. You were meant to be behind. <laughs> Andrei Zakharov became the first qualifier to bag a 2K bluff bonus for locking up Artem Litvinov. While actor Sean Astin took a surprising and reluctant chip lead. Wow. He's a chip lead. I'm just working. <laughs> you can't see that though, right? With no one yet to hit the rail, six are still in with a chance of making the all-important final. This is the last heat of the PokerStars.com Shark Cage, and we've still got a full table. That could be said to change, though, if Vanessa Selbst makes the wrong decision. Faraz Jacka hit a full house on the river and has put her all in. If Vanessa calls with just top hair, she'll be out of the competition. She's worried she's being bluffed. Can she get past the cage factor to find a fold? Vanessa's just thrown in a time bank chip. Oh, yeah, I forgot you guys left me in a position of being needing to know. So, just to recap, no one's going to the cage, but now Vanessa's facing a decision of either losing a big pot or losing an even bigger pot and being eliminated. She calls all in. She is beaten and she is out. Nice, sir. Bye, Vanessa. See for us. Nice, sir. I was actually bluffing the turn. Yeah, I was going to bet that. You had the best hand the whole time. I, right, I think she probably point figured point. if she folded and she was wrong, she would have blinded out in the cage anyway. So Vanessa is the first player out. It's a present from Russia's love. Thank you very much. Oh, awesome. Thank love. you very much. Thank you for getting it. Good luck. Nice playing with you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Vanessa really appreciates that, Andre. I can tell because she left it on her chair. Oh, there she goes. My day did not go very well. You know, I never got anything going the whole day. I just uh, had no cards. When I did pick up a hand, uh, you know, some uh, people picked up better hands, and you know, so it goes. Sure, it was perfect. Honestly, it's anybody's game. Right now, Fraz is playing pretty well for the most part. I would put my money on either him or Phil. Andre was nice enough to give me one of his uh, babushka dolls, I guess, so not going home empty-handed and uh, yeah, it's a nice little souvenir. I would have liked to win more, but I guess I'll take it. Actually, Vanessa, if you open that thing up, you'll find it's like 10 souvenirs. Available on Andre's girlfriend's parents' website. Great gifts for the whole family, assuming they've never heard of technology. I miss Vanessa. She had a warm feeling here the whole time, huh? After Vanessa's elimination, here's how the final five stack up. Sean is the chip leader, Faraz and Phil have well above starting stack, and Artem is the low man at the table. Well, now's the time to fire up your apps if you want to play along a poker. Finally. Blinds 12,000, 24,000 with an 8,000 ante. So the action's on Andre, who's got pocket nines. Pretty good hand when you haven't got a lot of chips. A raise from the qualifier. For us, with 8 9. And that's a re race. Look at Faraz trying to pressure the qualifier like a backseat prom date. It's been folded back around to Andre. I say get it in, home slice. Get it in. Go for the million dollars so you can take Valeria to the Galleria. Home slice? 
Maybe we can buy her a bunch of dresses that fit inside other smaller, dre bigger dresses. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. Well, Andre's requested more time. All in. And then announces, all in. Get it. For asphalt. Andre wins some badly needed chips. I forgot who I was raising. Can't bluff the bluff master. All of his bluffs have lots of smaller bluffs hidden inside them, and so on. There, I got it that time. Finally. Action on Artem. 10 7 suited. Game on. Car! Game on! He limps another Gibbons from Mr. Litvinov. I like the limping strategy. See flops for cheap, get to river, put someone in a cage. King five for Andre. Oh. Calling out of the small blind. And Faraz gets to see a free flop with 10-9 in the big blind. That is a hand I like seeing a free flop with. Ace, eight, seven on the flop. Andre checks. Because he whiffed. Faraz with an up and down straight draw also checks. Artem with the best hand, a pair of sevens. But he might not want to risk making this pot bigger with something that's not super strong. He checks as well. Turn for free. It's a deuce. Andre bets with no hand, no draw. And it's a small bet. This should elicit exactly zero folds. Faraz calls. Artem doesn't have to overcall, but this pot and the bet are small enough for him to peel a river. Yeah, Artem calls as well. So three-handed to the river, the cage therefore not in play. Boo. It's a jack. Faraz gets there. Yay! Faraz, river's a jacka. Action's been checked to him. Unfortunately, with the cage out of play, I think a bet from Faraz should get two pretty easy folds. It's a big bet as well. An over bet from Faraz. I think he's really hoping somebody gets hero-y. Maybe caught two pair by the river. Artem with just a pair of sevens. Time running out. Just without the cage in play, there's so little incentive for Faraz to bluff this. Less incentive, I should say. Five seconds, Artem. He faults. And Andre, who has just king high. Well, he could try his old river reshove double bluff. We saw that work in the last episode. Nah, he can't be bothered. And Faraz wins the pot. Since he's come out of the cage, everything's been coming up for us. Faraz is all quiet over there, just slowly building and building a little empire. Heavy is the blue fedora. Dr dreamed about this from the cage. Oh yeah, I told you. I had a lot of time to think in there. Got rid of some poker demons. He's like the poker Constantine. Okay, Joe, let's put your poker prowess to the test. How do you think you'd fare playing a hand against Philip Horatio Ivy? I fold. Ivy raises, and we're not going to see his whole cards here because we're going in the tank with Sean, who's got pocket nines. Hey, Mikey, got to take a peek? We're going to win one-eyed Philly's rich stuff. That's a call. Andre's out. Oh, Faraz calls. Jeez, how many people are going to play this hand against? Artem's getting better than six to one. For him to fold, his hand would have to be more worthless than two of my business cards. Artem requests time. He must have a really bad hand. Well, it's kind of do or die time. He's only got 75,000 left. Three big blinds. Well, he decides this isn't the time. Jack three, not a hand he wants to take a stand with. Pretty worthless. So three-way to the flop. Let's just make this easy and flop a set. Come on, Mikey! No set. A ten-high flop. Not terrible for nines. 
Phil Ivey's gonna demolish her house and put up a golf course. Phil continues. Sean calls. Phil would continue with a lot, so I don't think he necessarily has to have us beat here. Faraz folds, pocket threes, heads up to the turn. Which is a four. Board still not looking terrible for nines. I know, and I hate it. Phil bets again. Man, Phil's had it every time this entire heat. But this is the first time he's shown any real aggression on the turn. Seems suspect. Sean's clock is ticking. And he's shown a lot of weakness. I think he should call. Ten second warning. Respect, champion. <laughs> Sean folds. Thank you. Phil had top pair. I had you. Huge shock. I just lost the hand to Phil Ivy. I had nines. I had you. It's good. Yeah. You sure? That's all you needed. <laughs> nice fold, Mikey. I'm young and you put out a bunch of money and you get me all sweaty. I don't know. <laughs> Something happens. <laughs> Just going to do a vine and send them. Pot goes to Phil and the pot goes to Phil. Pot See pot if you can get him to do the truffle shuffle. So Phil Ivey continues to dominate the sixth and final heat. In the very beginning, he was bullying people. It was just obvious he was just, you know, on Phil Ivey and get out of this pot. Now he's just winning hand in hand. I had you. And the pot goes to Phil, and the pot goes to Phil, and the pot goes, it was almost kind of like a tick. Sean definitely felt intimidated from Phil Ivey and felt like he was running over the table. I mean, that happens to everyone. Sometimes you're getting cards, sometimes you're not getting cards, but because you won some pots, you just have a nice momentum going. So I've been there enough to not give Phil a false sense of confidence. You could be playing with the pros on the European Poker Tour. Qualify now at PokerStars.com. Don't forget you can join in the action from home. Make sure you download the Poker Play Along app. Five seats at the PokerStars.com Shark Cage final table have already been taken. In the Bahamas, we saw Daniel Negreanu make his debut on the show oh! <laughs> and lock up a spot in the final. Now I get to go to Monte Carlo. Before his friend Maria Ho crushed the redemption heat and chess grandmaster Jennifer Shahadi outwitted a cage fighter. Here in Monaco, Andre Akari and Antonio Esfandiari won their heats meaning there's just one chair at the final table left to fill. Hope you're playing along at home. It isn't too late to start. Download the Poker Play Along app. Blinds right now are 12,000, 24,000 with an 8,000 ante. Let's rejoin the action. Doesn't Sean Aston look like he's researching a role as a single dad who has to play poker to win back custody of his kids? Ace king of clubs for Sean. Uh, call. Ah, I think he's the realest celeb we've ever had on this show. He's genuinely stressed when he has to play a hand. I love it. A gibbons from Mr. Aston. Faraz calls as well with 9-7. Artem's in with 6-3 of diamonds. And Phil gets to see a free flop with 5-4 of diamonds. I'd be stressed out too if I was going four ways with three sharks with two cards, one love. Sean with top pair, top kicker. Artem with bottom pair, and he is all in. With that stack, yeah, story checks out. Phil with second pair, calls. Sean's played pretty tight in some other hands, and it's worked out for him, but folding here would be a bigger mistake than Richard Donner leaving in that line about the giant octopus and the Goonies when the scene was actually cut out. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> so Sean has called, Faraz has folded. I love it. And Artem knows he's going to need more help than a one-armed man in a rowboat. Well, that card helps him. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Artem picks up a flush draw. Good luck, buddy. Phil's got a flush draw, too, but it's no bueno. Well, it's good against Sean. Check. No cage in play as we go to the river. We're officially three-handed. <sighs> Probably shouldn't be reacting like that, but in case you hadn't noticed, there's a giant metal cage over there, so it's not exactly the most serious poker game. So whatever happens, Artem is going out. Sean's probably supposed to bet this, but I don't think there's too much of a point. 
Check. He checks behind. He'll win the pot. And Artem Litvinov will be sent to the rail. I didn't want to be greedy. If it was you, if you had what I had, you would have had at least at least 400,000 in there. And I was like, no, because then all of a sudden he'll come back over the top with an all-in and I'm dead. Yeah. I think Sean got pretty much close to max value there. No, he didn't, but uh, Artem's out. He went to the cage, but apart from that, he curbed the craziness today. I play today very bad because I lose in five plays. <sighs> today is a very bad play. I not like it to stay in the cage. <laughs> you stay short gauge and time is very, very long. You, my friends, quickly play. Quickly, quickly, quickly. If you have bad day, you all time is a push, bluff, boom, 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 and end the fast. But uh, they play very good company and uh, all, all is good. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So four-handed now, Phil the chip leader, Sean and Faraz pretty even in chips, Andre the short stack, with the blinds now at 15,000 and 30,000 with a 10,000 ante. Action on Phil. Nope. He's folding. That's what I do when I have nothing. To try it. I'm still young. Still learning, Phil. I know, you'll get there one day. You'll get there one day, you. Sean with ace five. Call. He said it with less of a question mark that time. He's getting better. Pocket fives for Andre. He raises. Faraz calls. Call. And Sean's in as well. That one had a full-on period on it that time. Nice. Three-way to the flop. Which is queen, ten, nine. Faraz with bottom pair and a straight draw. It's a pretty ratchet flop for fives. It's not even really a board you can bluff too much. Someone's bound to have a piece. Action check to Faraz. Now to Sean. Nope. Little hesitation there, but I don't know how much you can really read from that. He seems to hesitate with his good hands, too. I guess... Sean bets with just ace high. I'd like to see him bet a little bigger, but I don't think Faraz is folding either way. Andre, yeah, he's out of here. And Faraz calls. Heads up to the turn, which is a five that would have been a set for the qualifier. So Sean now has a small piece of this. Check. Action goes check, check. We're going to the river with the cage in play. Double barrel might have gotten it done. It's a seven, so Faraz has a lock on this. He checks to Sean. Does he bluff? Uh, check. No. Faraz might have folded to a bet there, and also Sean might have ended up in the cage. I think it's a wash. End result, Faraz wins a decent sized pot. I've got a pair of fives. You do? Cool story, comrade. Stressed. Come on, single dad. It's for your kids. Sean will be under the gun on this next hand. I can see the tagline now. He wants to raise his kids, not his poker hands. Queen Jack. Call. Told you. It's a Gibbons. 9-6 suited for Faraz. Call. In from the small. Check. And Phil checks his option with Queen Deuce. Both these guys know they can push Sean around. A 10 high flop. Sean's still ahead with Queen Jack high. Yeah, but one of these guys is going to make it so that he doesn't get a free card. And it's going to be Phil. He bets. How do you want to look at it? 25. Third call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Now all he's got to do is call two more increasingly big barrels. Not much of a hand for Faraz. He lets it go. The turn card. It's the queen of clubs. Top pair for both players. Check. Action goes check, check. We're going to the river. The cage is in play, and that is another club. A flush for Phil. Ah, oh, come on, Phil. Come on. Check. Check to showdown. Flush. Queen. 
More like Phil I've been sucked out on. You're just drag me along, aren't you? You're just kind of, you're just toying with me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky hand. Phil's just playing it cool because he's a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I swear to God. Phil Ivey's always the same. I love playing poker. I still enjoy it. I still get excited when there's a big poker tournament. I love to play the cash games. I love to put in the time I love playing. And I always have, and that's never changed. Poker's changed, the game's become a lot tougher. People are learning a lot faster. People are getting better quicker. It's become a lot tougher of a sport. For me to maintain, it's been pretty easy for me because I've never had that burnt out feeling that a lot of players get when they've been playing as long as I have. Hard to get that burnt out feeling when you're sleeping well on a giant pile of money. Hey, there's Phil's mom and sister and a guy I'm never making a joke about, ever. <laughs> If that's Phil's stepdad, I'm probably gonna go down there and high-five his mom. Actions on the qualifier, Andre. Eight, four of hearts. And he folds. For us, with Jack Deuce on the button. That's a raise. Ace queen for Sean. Three bet? So, raise 125. Yeah, buddy! Back on for us. Why fold when you can play? Seems like an easy decision. Samwise meets Smeagol. You got a lot more chips. Gonna do something Rebo. with them. Precious. The flop is king high. Sean's still ahead with ace high. But he can't be too comfortable. He looks like he's gonna throw up in his mouth a little bit at the thought of c-betting with ace high. Do it to get your kids back, single poker dad! He's running out of time. Ten seconds left on his shot clock. And he still wears his wedding ring. Just in time! Nice one, I even like the sizing. I don't think Faraz thinks Sean's ever gonna do this with a weak hand when he typically plays so passively. Raz lets it go. Yes. I don't know why I'm rooting so hard for Sean, but I am. Fluff that one up. Don't. Mm. Don't get cocky, kid. Oh, you did bluff that one. With the best hand. Just want you to know I'm capable. <laughs> <laughs> of getting very lucky. I'm capable of getting very lucky. Damn. Don't reel it in, Sean. Own it. I'm capable of smacking you. Hey. I don't want to fail to yell at me, Andre playing too many talk. hands. You're not very good at your trash talk. You're too nice a guy. You're just not, you're just, you're just not good at it. I wasn't trash talking. You no, know, I'm just saying, like, if you, like, have to try, you just wouldn't be good at it. You're mean. <laughs> Sean doesn't even talk trash when he's taking out the garbage. Oh, I'll load it up. Can I pull the trigger? The boys in the hood will be ashamed of me. Who are these boys everyone's always talking about, and how do they all fit in the same hoodie? Blind still 15-30. Veraz folds. Fill with ace tray. He raises. Andre in the big blind has ace jack. Unless that's a Russian nesting stack he's got over there, and there's a bunch of hidden chips within those chips. It's ride or die time, Andre. Well, that's a pretty committing re-raise. Yeah, I'll take it. How much more you have? Not that much. Blue 50 and... Uh, 25, 375. Fail, false. Okay. What are you thinking about knocking it, man? Think about it. I'll wait. That's how you trash talk with an economy of words. Nailed it. Andre just about keeping his head above water, but Phil is still circling and he's not staying down, not even with three barrels on him.
Phil Ivey is playing good. Respect, champion. I had you. Running good. You're just toying with me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky hand. And looking good to make the final of the PokerStars.com Shark Cage. <laughs> He's got the chip lead, and the cage hasn't caused him any consternation. I don't mind going in the cage. That's not a big deal. I'm just going to go on my read. I'm going to fold, and if he's bluffing, he's bluffing. I've been bluffed before, so I'll be all right if I go in a cage around. So what other shows with a gimmick do you like? Yeah, this, may, this may be the only one I've yeah. been on. Yeah. Here's the cream of the crop. This is it. This is the Super Bowl. What do you mean gimmick? It's not like some executive came up with the title of this show and then we worked backwards. Moving swiftly on, blinds 20,000, 40,000 with a 15K ante. It's been nice working with you. Phil with ace four under the gun. He raises. Sean folds. Andre's out. Faraz? That's 6 5 suited. Ah, oh, he's in. Yes, he is. The flop is ace high. Top pair for Phil. For us, he's got no choice but to check this. And Phil checks it back. Keeps the pot small. Deuce of spades on the turn. Faraz picks up a flush draw. So when Phil checks the flop, he keeps the pot small, and he opens the door for Faraz to bluff the turn. In this case, it'll be a semi-bluff. There's the bet from Faraz. Falling right into his trap. Phil calls. We go to the river with the cage in play. Queen of clubs. No flush for Faraz. Puts a four card straight out there. Yeah, let's see if he tries to rep the king. Nope, he checks to Phil. Who checks behind? Hey, Almost the nut low for Faraz. Phil's check on the flop squeezed one more bet out of him. That dig he made earlier about him being bad at trash talk probably helped too. Phil Ivey continues to crush this table as he increases his chip lead. Our qualifier is first to speak on this hand. Ace four. He raises. Round to Phil in the small blind. Queen Jack. He calls. And Sean folds the big blind. That's right, buddy. It's just heads up. You and Ivy. Good luck with that. Andre was ahead before the flop with ace high. He's still ahead. Plus, he has a straight draw. Not sure how confident he'll feel about that. Check, check. The turn sees Andre Perez four. Phil shan't be checking again. Oh. You know I'm first, right? Oh, no, Phil, sorry. Nah, I just pooped. Now you can bet. What's Phil doing? Ivy, you evil little genius. See ya, Andre. Ivy check raises. All in. And Andre responds by moving all in. What? Quick fold from Phil. I love it. I love it, and I love you. That was awesome. The online qualifier keeping his head above water. I get it because of the shark cage. Yes, it was all planned. 80. For us, raising with 7-5 of diamonds. Sean with ace-10. Another three bet? Call. Nah. Not this time. At least he didn't fold. <clears throat> Heads up to the flop. Which has two diamonds on it. Sean still has the best hand for now. Checks to Faraz. Who continues. Now, even though we know Sean's got the best hand, I don't hate a fold here. I would have liked to see him maybe re-raise before the flop, but calling here is a decent chunk of his stack, and he's likely to just face more and more barrels. 
even if Faraz misses. A faults. That sucked. Did you notice my uh, my chunk reference? Goonies. No. Running scared, Faraz. You got me running scared, man. Chicken. Twenty-four hours ago, I was in the middle of a farm in Columbus at my friend's place, who uh, has this kind of self-sustaining farm with chickens and goats. We're so just sitting there having a good time in the field and get this call. Hey, do you want to show up on Shark Cage in a day and a half? So I literally drove six hours to Chicago to pick up my passport and flew to Monaco, quite the opposite scene of the farm. After I win Shark Cage, I'm gonna get right back over there to the Midwest and start hanging out with those chickens again. Monaco is not that different from a farm. There's a lot of horses' asses. My 12 year old, yeah, she went text crazy. She sent one text, hey, I'm chip leader. Now, I'm now they're in radio silence. <laughs> no MG, lol, on fleek, hashtag. We know what silence usually means. What, what? I'm not out yet, that's something. I'm sure your children still love you. Sean is the second shortest stack right now. Phil still chip leader by some considerable margin. Blind still 2040. Round to Andre and the small blind. King five suited. That's a raise from the qualifier. Yeah, sure. I just hope he doesn't expect Faraz to ever fold his big blind. Faraz with jack six of spades. Calls. We're going to the flop. Top pair for Faraz, bottom pair for Andre. Andre shoves! Wow. Sick. Unlucky. Good game, Andre. Wait, what is. What's Faraz thinking about? He's got top pair. Is he thinking about folding? Surely not. He's requested more time! I thought he would have snapped faster than a plastic fork and a steak. Worried about his kicker, maybe? Or concerned about an overpair? Did he misread his hand? Want me to put it in? You like your hand? Cole. Huh? Cole. Yeah. Can you show me if I throw it away? Sure. You let me see one. One card. Yeah. Huh? One card. One card. Ten Is seconds. Are that already? Yes. Uh, uh, five seconds. Faraz's hand is dead! Holy! It's like a pick one, right? You said if you folded, not if your hand was killed. It's a good card to show. You showed the five. Either one would have been a good one. People getting cheeky over here. Chick, chicka boom, chick, chicka boom. Somebody stop him! Can't believe he got away with that. It was like a daring daylight robbery. Sean to act first. Pocket fours. And again with the gibbons. How much you want to bet either Faraz or Phil raises? Well, Andre's also got a pocket pair. Deuces. He calls as well. Definitely one of them's raising now. Faraz not raising. Calls with 10-5. Ace, queen of diamonds for Phil. And there's the race. Sean folds. Fair. I'll win. Andre shoves again. And this time, he gets called. We're off to the races. Wow. Somebody call Glenn Fry because we are going Flip City. Queen Good luck. Thank you, you too. Now, what did you have just now? Oh, I had pocket fours. Ace or queen? No. Like food versus sex, one of these two hands has a slight advantage. Our qualifier's life on the line, and it's an ace high flop. Who needs food anyway, other than everyone? I'm sorry, Valeria, but the shark cage will not be putting food on your table. Andre looking for a deuce. 
qualifier needs to hit on the river. He misses. Andre is out. Okay, man. I guess I misspoke. Andre is technically two thousand dollars more profitable than any qualifier this season. Good game. Thank you. Anyway, Thank you. So no qualifier in the final. Party pooper, Phil. Yeah, it's all Phil Ivy's fault. Andre, das Vidania. I'm happy. I'm happy because good experience. It was uh, maybe best experience in my life. Can't bluff the bluff master. I think that I played well. When I sent Atom to the shark cage, <laughs> I'm happy. Phil Ivy is the best player in the world. So I think Phil Ivy win now. Okay, man. Right now, this table is Amity Island and Phil is the shark. Will Faraz or Sean become Chief Brody? Tag them, shark cage. Phil Ivey is doing what Phil Ivey does best, crushing hopes and owning souls. Phil said I wasn't very good at trash talking. You're too nice a guy. You're just not good at it. Maybe I'll come up with something really witty to say to him. That'll be my goal. My goal for 2015, to make Phil Ivey cry. You're mean. <laughs> he is in complete command of this heat and on course to take the last seat in the Pokestars.com Shark Cage Final. With Andre the Qualifier dispatched, by Phil, of course, we're down to three, and that means no more cage. The whole idea of thinking about bluff or value and value or bluff and cage and this and two grand and nine grand. <sighs> I was all, when he said, okay, there, the cage doesn't come into play now, I'm like, good. He is literally the only one that doesn't want the cage in play. No more shark cage. It never came into play for Shawnee Boy. We might have a real-life Rudy situation on our hands here. Blinds are now 30,000, 60,000 with a 20,000 ante. For us, with Jack-7. 120. Which is a raise. Ace-10 suited for Sean. Love to see a re-raise here. So call like that. You did not get to see a re-raise. You just folded because you don't want to let me. You don't want me to leave you with that maniac. No, I don't. Be nice to me. I'm gonna try my best not to. You already, you already got me once. You gotta get me again. I'd also like to see a Goonie sequel. Apparently, that's not happening either. Wow, Sean flops a royal flush draw. No, I love Sean. The bigger the draw, the more stressed out he gets. <laughs> and obviously, he still has the best hand with Ace High. I'm gonna bet. Why not? 155. Sean doesn't really have the stack to call. His clock's running. He needs to make a decision in the next 10 seconds. Raise. He's going for it. I don't hate it. 310. Ha! Faraz knew the amount before Sean did, I think. I probably would have moved all in, but I like the idea. Bizarrely, Faraz calls. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Faraz is up to here. You'd expect Sean to be raising a big draw at worst. Seven on the turn sees Faraz take the lead. Check. Maybe Faraz checks behind. If Sean's got nothing, a seven would be good. No, he bets his pair. Sean does have these guys confused. All in. And Sean shoves! Faraz folds! That hand was bizarre. Faraz just got worked by the guy from Encino Man. <laughs> That's California Man for you Europeans. A real nice play. Oh, we got the absolute maximum. <laughs> Rudy! 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 
Had a little bit of a rough day here, my friend. Me? I just realized that Faraz is the very definition of farm to table. Sean is now second in chips. Phil's still the massive chip leader. Faraz is the shorty. Danger zone. One of these three is taking the final seat at the final table. Ivy in command right now. Ace three on the button. Phil raises. Pocket fours for Faraz. This is going to be the one. How much do you have about? Me? Yeah. Is this second place? Yeah, but the prize is a bagel. 1.2, 1.3 about? 1.2. Yeah. Why? Faraz moves all in and gets caught by Phil. Sorry for the slow roll. I don't really know why you're counting him down. I just want to see what you're committing yourself to. What? Or if you were committed. Because at some point you were going to fall, right? <laughs> Me? It's like listening to a couple pitchers talk. No, it isn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> World Series, and they're not pitching that game, but they sit, they're chit-chatting with each other. <laughs> we're pitching this game, look. Yeah. Oh, man, once Phil looked at him, Sean totally lost his nerve with that analogy. <laughs> Anyway, Faraz is at risk, and there's an ace on the flop. Well, at least Faraz has got three outs instead of two. Needs a three to make a straight. And he's going to need to hit that three on the river. Phil ain't scared. Three outer, nice and painful. Give it to him. It's possible. The river is... A seven, and that means we lose for Az Jacker in third place as Phil and Sean go heads up. Third place. I like you, dude. You're awesome. Take him down. Get him back for me. All right. I think this is going to be my favorite heads up of all time, but it's back to the farm for Faraz. I think this is an amazing event. Uh, I got to play it last season for a short bit. But uh, it's definitely such a unique event. I mean, you never see everybody just smiling and having such a good time at the table. It's the cream of the crop. This is it. This is the Super Bowl. I played an okay game. There is definitely a couple spots that I think I could have taken that I didn't. People getting cheeky over here. I'd say I'm uh, I'm happy with my game, but I don't, I don't think I played my, my A game. I loaded up. Can I pull the trigger? Now that Phil and Sean are heads up, I, I think it's fairly obvious who the favorite is. Phil Ivey is definitely the favorite. But with that said, I would much rather see Sean make a amazing comeback and take this down. That would be awesome. I couldn't agree more. If you're watching the TV game, what are the odds on me against him right now? 50-50 chance. No, not with your chip stack like that. Oh. That's what I mean. Like, what does is, what is the chip stack odd do to me? Are you looking to gamble? No. Make no, I'm just trying to make myself feel better for the, the flight home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe focus on your adoring wife and children. I just knocked Faraz out. I'm heads up with Sean. V very likable guy. Um, you can tell he hasn't played much poker. Phil Ivey's arguably the best poker player in the world, right? It's like getting to play a uh, shoot around with Michael Jordan, you know, like when you're in high school. Feeling pretty good. I mean, I have close to five million in chips. He has a little over a million. At this point, I'm feeling like I have a very good chance of winning. Here we are. <laughs> Heads up, Phil Ivey. Take a deep breath. Own your own space, man. Be good. Be strong. Goonies never stay down. He just quoted the Goonies. You can't see me, but I'm doing the truffle shuffle right now. It's grotesque. Sit down. Put your shirt on. It's going to go fast, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's going to go fast. I hope so. Did you have a lot of sleep? Well, that's not you. <laughs> yeah, I can't count on that, then. Maybe his mom will make him nervous. Mine does, but that's because she's usually drunk. So Phil has a five-to-one chip lead over Sean. King six. He raises. Fours for Sean. How much is it? 150. 150. Stick it in his ear. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Oh, he just calls. The flop gives Ivy trips. 
No oh, man, uh, subpoena him in. No sign. Don't sign. All in. Sean shoves. Call. And Phil calls. Don't touch that. That's Philly's gold. Sean drawing thin. He's got two outs. Phil almost seems disappointed it's going to be this easy. There's a 93% chance that Phil Ivey is taking that last seat in the Shark Cage final. And with a jack on the turn, Sean is now drawing to a chop. Rudy. Okay, I think I'll stop. The river card. Here's a deuce. The poker legend the beats the Hobbit. Oh, nice plan. Sean Aston, second place. Phil Ivey going to go move on to play for a million dollars. Wow. Well, well, I didn't make you sit down for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing you can do yet. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I guess it really is their time up there. Bill Ivy. Bill Ivy. Really? Holy Lord, Phil Ivy is going to the Shark Cage final. It went perfect. I mean, I uh, got off to a good start. I mean, I won all my key hands. So couldn't ask for more. Let's see if we can finish the next one quick, too. I honestly don't know what else I could have done. Given my level of knowledge and experience, I, I think I played as well as I, I could possibly play. Anytime you get to play a new form of poker where uh, you get a bonus for bluffing somebody out, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, it, it brings a whole new dynamic to the game. There's a lot more thinking involved. Phil came in and he was just stealth mode. Quiet, focused. Towards the end of the tournament there, he was enjoying himself a little bit more. I think he knew it was a lock <laughs> at that point. Got a little bit of a rough day here, my friend. Me? Got one more to go. I'm looking forward to it. Always fun playing with Daniel and Antonio. So, we'll see what happens. Was there ever any doubt? Phil Ivey takes the last seat at the final table, joining his longtime buddy, Daniel Negreanu, and Maria Ho, Jennifer Shahadi, Andre Akari, and Antonio Esfandiari. Sick lineup. Next time, six of the best go to battle. Got very serious in here. Yeah, we're playing for real money. The rewards are big. What second place get? Nothing. And the risks are high. I'm gonna gamble. Big deal. You know, I'm fing Daniel Negrano. When the cage is in play. We need to put people in a cage, yo. That's what's up. <laughs> Get in that cage. <laughs> I'm so happy. You told me you were tight, man. They told you. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to the cage if this is a bluff card? Bluff? Huh? That was a bluff, wasn't it, Daniel? What are you talking about? It was a bluff. What do you mean, bluff, Phil? Yeah, that was a bluff. That one was a bluff. Well, you tune in and watch Shark Cage and you'll find out.